What's up guys? So today in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started on Airtable very easily. It's going to get you or maybe your whole team set up and you'll learn how to use the program the most efficient way. And these are some of my best practices that I teach many of my clients. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS. And what we do is we help business owners, probably just like you, help them optimize their information systems on stuff like Airtable. It's on the Slack. So without further ado, we'll get you set up in Airtable now. So as you can see, we are in the workspace of Airtable. This is probably what your workspace looks like. I added a bunch of sample bases in here. And to get started, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a sample base. And I'm actually probably just going to show you how to do that, and then I'm gonna show you how to use some of these sample ones, these templates that you can get for free from Airtable, and explain some of the structure around how Airtable works. So to add a new base, if you just wanna start from scratch, I would think of Airtable much like Microsoft Access. Now, Microsoft Access is a relational database, so it's it connects data of different classes, which would be different tables, so different types of information, and it correlates them in fields. And to add a new database, a new base, you come over here and you start with a template, import data, or you start from scratch. Now, if I start from scratch, it'll give me the option to name the base, put a color on there, pick an icon, as well as like start with some Slack notifications and other stuff, but we're not quite set up that far yet. So I'm just gonna show you some of the basics of Airtable database design, as well as just using the platform in itself. So to get started, let's just jump into, let's see, digital video production. I haven't looked at this yet, but right now what you see here is if you go into one of these templates or you can create this on your own, you can create like a little introduction, a little walkthrough of your Airtable database. And you can do this if you come up here to the top and you do add a base description. So you can add how to use your base, add maybe add some Loom videos in there, just similar to this Loom video, except this one will be posted on YouTube. But you can add that kind of stuff in there to get your users acquainted with Airtable. Now, up here at the top, you'll see a row, and this would be like similar at the bottom of Excel, all the tabs, these are different tables. So similar to Excel, they're different tables. And in here, you'll notice the all the data in every single table is very vertical. All Everything in the same column or in Airtable field, all of this is very similar data. And this is how Airtable works. It's similar to Access in that all of the data is in records and up and down it's in fields. So this right here is one record. All the way across here, if I scroll all the way over here, this is all one record and that's how it's correlated. If you use like the Page Designer app to make like PDFs, or invoices or anything, it's going to pull everything from one record. Now, you might also see there's lots of different field types. So I'll do a quick walkthrough of some of the field types. So if I come up here and click in this top banner, if I click like any of these little arrows right here, you can customize the field. Now, this first field is important. It needs to be a unique field. So it needs to be what's called like a unique identifier. It's the primary field. This primary field needs to be unique because if we scroll over here to some of these other field types, like specifically these, these are all linked fields. So these link up with different tables. This is linked to this record in the agencies table. This is linked to this record in the agency team corresponding table. So that's just a little introduction to that, but this primary field is going to have less options. Like if we come through here, we can see there's a good amount I'll move myself over here, but there's a good amount of fields, but there's it's like missing some of these at the bottom, like if you're familiar with a lookup field or a rollup field or a linked field, those can't be in this first one because it needs to be a unique identifier. So if we go to the second one and any of the other ones, we'll be able to see there's a lot more. So if I change this from that to like this one, you'll be able to see there's rollup, there's count, there's lookup, there's all these other ones that you wouldn't have in that first field. There's a button, you can create a button to do some stuff in your Airtable database that's really cool. But to just to go through some of these, for example, this one is a single line text, so it can only have one line of text across here. This one is a drop down list, so you can make these in Excel, except you can just do it very easily up here by customizing this field type and adding your drop down. And you can just add the drop down right here and then pick whichever one corresponds to that record. You can also have attachments in here. So for this one, it's thumbnails. You can also include like PDFs and other video attachments as well. This one's a date and time field. Now this is a manually manually added date and time field. 
if I change this, you'll be able to see there's two other date and time fields that you can choose from. You can choose the created time, which is not able to be changed or edited. It's just whenever that record was created, that's when it will come in here. So if I create this, it'll say these records were created in 2017. And if I change that created time, I can change the field type to change it. But say I want to change it to one of these other date fields, we can use the last modified time. So we can use, use this to say, when was the last time this record was edited? Or we can say specific fields within this record. So if I want to know the last time the project status was changed, I could come in here and click specific fields and then maybe just click project status. So I can use those and then as you can see here, it's now 2019 data for most of these. So the records were created in 2017, last edited in 2019 it sounds like. Now this is all of your collaborators. So if you bring other people into the Airtable database, which you can use this share up here, you can invite people to the workspace or just the base that is important. If you want people to have access to any of your bases, you'll share it with the workspace. If you want them to have access to just one base, you'll share it at the base level. Most people do the base level, or if you don't want them to have editing permissions, a lot of times people just share at the view level. So views are also important. So before we get into views, I do want to go through just a couple of these other things. So this one is similar to that select field is very similar. Actually, you still have all these options, but it's called a multi-select field. So I can have two of these drop down options instead of just one. And that's the same as these. And you can tell which field type it is because up here it has this little icon. And if you hover over it, it says multi-select there. Now there's also like platform, which is another single select field, like a drop down list. You can also have long text. And long text, just sim similar to the single line text, it just means you can have multiple lines. And you can also enable rich text formatting if you come in here and toggle this on. So you can include checklists, hyperlinks, headers, code blocks, and more. Now with the date fields as well, there's a duration field, which this would be like one hour, this would be 10 hours, three hours. And you can just change this, customize the field type and pick the duration if that's something you want. So I could go on and on through these. There's a lot of the similar ones, similar to like Microsoft Excel with like money and these other ones. But before I get into these linked fields, I do want to briefly mention some of these views over here. So when you see these things up here at the top, these are tables and within a table, you're like this whole table, it has 18 records and you can create different views to only see subsets of that data, kind of like running a query in Microsoft Access. Now to run, run those queries, it'll run it live. So it'd be 24 seven. So if I come in here to like status tracker, or I guess maybe a better one would be live videos. It has a filter in here. So you can only see three of those records, but just because you can only see three records in here, doesn't mean it's deleted in this table. It's not deleted in the table. It's just, it's just sorting these or filtering these based on what these parameters you set up here. So you can hide fields, which does not delete the fields. It just hides them from this view. You can filter them, which just filters them in this view. If you really want to delete records, you can right click anywhere on the record and delete it there, or you can check the boxes over here and I can delete these two records. So now we only have one record and this table that is unfiltered showing all of the records will now only have 16, as you can see right here. So in addition to that, if we come to like maybe the status tracker, you can see this one is grouped. Now you can't see it up here that well, but this purple icon right here, that's showing you that it's grouped by this. So if you've heard of a Kanban view where it's like a lot of sales team sales teams use this, if you have a single select, you can use this and drag and drop these into different categories. Like maybe you're moving them through a sales pipeline, you have one single select, and this is how you can move them to the through the single select stages very easily. So that's just a little bit about the views. It is important within one table, you can have tons and tons of views. Now, if you filter or sort or anything in any of the views, or if you hide fields, it's not going to really affect the data at all, unless you actually go in and edit the record or if you delete records. So that's really all you need to know about views. And you can test out all of these over here. If you create a view, you can create a grid, a form, a calendar, gallery, a Kanban, and at the end, I'll actually help you out with the forms. So I'll teach you that later. But now what I wanted to move into were these linked records. So these linked records, they are amazing. This is actually what brings the power of the relational database to you. It's what allows you to do stuff like lookup fields. It's what allows you to do roll up fields, count records, 
and so on and so forth. So these linked records, these are accessing data in other tables in this database. And if you're thinking like, oh, I want part of my process in this database, and then part of my process in this other base, maybe you just want to like keep your record limits down low. I'm just gonna tell you right now, don't, because if you can connect this data, you can access it a lot easier. So for example, for this video, if I come over here and I expand this record, I'll be able to see all of these linked records and other tables without just going and finding those in that other database. Like I can see the agency that's working on this video. I can see the agency that's working on it. And if I click on this, it'll expand that record too. So then within that, I can see the linked records. You can tell it's a linked record because of this right here. And I can see the people in that agency that are working on this project. And so I can go even further and look at the agency team. I can look at what's, who's the specific writer, who's the editor, who's the fact checker. And these are all pulling from some of these other like agency contact fields. So like, for example, now think about the reverse. So in the video tracker, we could see all of the agency contacts assigned to that video project. Here in the agency contacts table, we can actually see the reverse. So we can see for one person, what are all the video projects that they're working on? And that's the power of the linked record. So now if we come down here for this person, Joanne Morgan, we can come down here and see she's only working on this one video project. So maybe if we try to find someone with more than one, or maybe everybody just has one, that's fine for this example. At certain points, somebody might have multiple. So if you want to assign them to a new project, you might come in here and say, we want to assign them to that project too. And so now if we expand Jerry Pritchard's record, we can see that he is linked to two projects. So that that is the best way of explaining the power of this relational database and the power that it can have for your business. So aside from that, I encourage you to come, or, come over here. Once you really get familiar with the power of the relational database with those linked records, how to use the roll-up fields and how to use those lookup fields, I encourage you to go check out some like that stuff like automations and apps. They're more advanced features, so don't get in them right away. If that's what you came to Airtable for, I still encourage you to just learn these things up here. So hide fields, filter, group, sort, and this is conditional formatting. It's very easy if you've used Excel before. And also just learn all the different field types. There's a, I have a whole series on formulas. If you want to learn how to do formulas, I think I have 19 or so videos in that playlist right now. And also come learn how to do these views. Add these different views, practice the filtering, sorting, grouping. And now if you're interested in learning how to make your first Airtable form, which is gonna be how users can enter data in your database without actually having access to your database, or maybe you wanna collect responses or really use it like any like job form or type form or anything like that. You can collect data and input it directly into your Airtable database using Airtable forms. Just go click this end screen right here and you can learn all about how to make Airtable forms. I encourage you to go do that if you really want to access the power of Airtable and get people interacting with this data. Go check this out, how to use Airtable forms and it'll get you started very easily on how to use that form to get data into your Airtable. So without further ado, have a great day and go click that end screen right there and I'll see you there.